welcome. My name is Sarah Helene Dewey and today we're gonna do some art together. Um, I grew up here in Albuquerque in the South Valley and went to school at UNM and found printmaking and I've been teaching in different nonprofits to kids and adults ever since. Um, so today we are going to print on fabric using diluted bleach. Um, this is for third grade plus and you're probably going to need a little bit of help from an adult or someone older than you just to help pour the bleach and set up and make sure everything's good. Um, today you are going to collect some materials. Um, remember that you can pause at any moment in this video and rewind if you need to um, or take a break to take a breath or drink some water. Um, so gather your materials. Today you are going to need a small bowl or a cup for your bleach water, a rag or a paper towel, an apron or a work shirt, um, something to cover your clothing because bleach will stain your clothing. Um, you'll need access to a kitchen sink for cleanup. A trash can nearby is always helpful. Um, you can use latex gloves if you want to, but it's not necessary. Um, today we're going to make our own paintbrush, so you'll need a clothespin or some kind of similar clip and a little piece of fabric to fold up inside of it. Um, you'll also need a paperweight. This can be like um, a cup or a rock even, something just to hold down our stencil that we'll be working with. Um, you'll also need a pair of scissors. You're going to need three sheets of paper for drying on and cutting out. You'll need some bleach, just a couple caps full of it, um, about a half a cup of water, and newspaper or a tablecloth or a tarp, something to cover your work surface. It's really important. Um, you'll need one to three pieces of fabric. It should be natural. So you can look at the tag um, and see what the ingredients are. <laughs> um, cotton is natural, wool is natural. Um, there's a number of things. Polyester, um, if it's 100% polyester, it might not work. Um, you can try it, but um, yeah. So it can be dark colored today. Um, we'll be bleaching it so it'll get lighter. So you want a darker fabric um, and you want them to be at least eight and a half by 11 because um, we'll be working on it and we want it pretty big. And you can use old sheets. You can use an old t-shirt that you want to give new life to. You can use um, jeans. You can use pillowcases that you can then reuse um, as pillowcases. Um, and this can be fabric that you make into something new later on. You will also need a writing utensil. So you can use a pen or a pencil, a marker, um, anything you have, just one. So go ahead and gather your materials and come back when you're ready. So we're gonna go over some, some terms today. Um, we've gone over a stencil, that's the paper cutout. It has holes in it, we'll be using that to print with. Um, our main terms today are abstract. So abstract, the definition of abstract is existing in thought as an idea, but not having a physical or concrete existence. Um, that's one. And two is in abstract art. Um, abstract art does not attempt to represent external reality, but seeks to achieve its effect using shapes, forms, colors, and textures. So today we're going to think about um, abstract ideas. How do we represent a, an idea like happy or love on a piece of paper? So these things don't really exist as a physical thing in reality. It's not something you can hold and it looks like something. Um, but we'll be representing it um, using abstract design. Um, yeah, just drawing. And then um, in art, it's the same thing. So we won't be making realistic, super realistic um, representations of things. We'll be using paper, and so it's gonna be abstract. It's gonna be shapes, very concrete shapes that we cut out to represent an idea that we have. 
Um, our next word is symbol, and it's related to abstract. Um, a symbol is a thing that represents or stands for something else, especially a material object representing something abstract. So they're very related. Today we're going to make some symbols um, out of paper to make our stencils, um, and that's going to represent something to you, something personal in your design. Um, awesome. So let's get started. Hi, uh, welcome back. So we have our workspace here and we've gathered all of our materials. Um, first thing we're gonna do is put on our apron or our work shirt, whatever you've got. If you have long sleeves um, or baggy sleeves, you wanna pull them up. Um, if you have any dangly jewelry, earrings, or long hair in your face, go ahead and either take off your jewelry um, Put it back, put back your hair. Um, today we have a plastic sheet on the table, um, which is good because we'll be working with bleach. I'm also going to put newspaper down. I like to have a workspace um, that is everywhere that I can reach. So if you're sitting um, or standing, you wanna just reach around and this is, this is the area that we'll be working in. Um, but today we have our whole covered, our whole table covered, um, which is just a good, good thing to do. <laughs> so you can also use a tarp um, or an old sheet, maybe an old tablecloth to cover it, um, or even brown paper bags. Cool. Okay, so we have our paper. Um, the very first thing we're gonna do is make our paintbrush. Um, and the reason we're going to do that is because sometimes we have really small brushes and they just are not going to cover enough. Um, so I have a clothespin here and you can use like a similar clip like this, maybe a binder clip. Um, yeah, I think those are what would work. And then I have a fabric scrap. So it can be pretty small. Um, with sheets, sometimes you can cut the edge and then rip it. Um, so here's this. Okay, so we just need a small little piece. And this can be a towel, it can be an old rag, um, an old sheet. And you're just going to keep folding it in half and in half again. Um, and for this one, I'm going to roll it, kind of. Let's see. So basically, we want something that when you press it, it stays pretty firm. Um, and something pretty thick. So it's not like thin and floppy like this. But it'll be firm. So you want to roll it up. And then I'm going to try this. I'm going to put my clip here. And then this is now my paintbrush right here. So we'll be pressing, and you might want a little more room to press with. So there we go, that's our tool. Another thing you can do is if you have um, an old sponge, like maybe from your kitchen or something, this is what I had at home. Um, I think this is a real sponge, but it can be any kind of sponge. Um, you wanna just cut off a little piece, maybe like this. And then a similar thing. I'm just going to put it in your clip, and then that's your paintbrush. See, it's firm, and you press it, and voila, okay? Cool. So there's that. Okay. Now, we're gonna do a warm up. So um, a warm up in art is similar to a physical warm up. We're just getting some ideas out and kind of getting our hands warmed up. So um, we can do this a little bit first and take a deep breath um, and get out one piece of paper and your writing utensil. Today I have a pen. You can use a marker or a pencil um, or anything else that you have at home. Um, so first we're going to make what's called a table. Um, so you're going to make one line in the middle and then 
like this, and then a line on either side. So that we kind of have four equal segments on your paper. Okay, then we're gonna make three sections here. And you can just eyeball it, but I'm gonna come across here and across here like that. So we have three down and four across. I'm gonna make them a little darker and go over them again if you need. Um, okay, so on the top left corner, it's usually where we start writing. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be here for me. Um, we're gonna make some symbols. So a symbol um, is one of our key terms today, and it's um, a drawing, sometimes an image of something that represents something else. So on this top left corner, we're gonna make a symbol of, I have a list of things here. Um, I'll do something easy. Um, we'll do moon. So make a symbol of a moon and you can make it big. And I like to make a couple of them um, because sometimes the first one that you make, I don't know, it doesn't seem very clear sometimes um, if you were to just look at it. So work for a couple minutes and we're gonna make a symbol of a moon in that top left square. Okay. Um, underneath that, we're gonna make a symbol for um, stinky. So think about um, what stinky means. Another word for that is smelly. Um, yeah, so go ahead and make some symbol of what you think stinky looks like. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, and then you might have a couple ideas. Um, so just draw those in the square beneath the moon. Okay, and below that, on the bottom square, now you're gonna combine the two. So um, I'll show you what I did. Um, yes, yeah, so we have moon, and then moon has light, so we have some radiating light, and um, stinky is usually a negative thing, so I have a, a sad face. So you're gonna choose your favorite um, symbol from each of these, and on this bottom one, you're gonna combine it. Um, so on the bottom, it's gonna be stinky, Moon, okay? And you don't need to think about it too much. You're just gonna go with your first instinct. Okay, on the next top, top segment, we're gonna make a symbol for cake. Below that, we are going to do windy. So whatever you think windy would look like in a simple 
line form. And then below that, we're going to combine the two. So we're going to do windy cake <laughs> somehow. Okay, and we'll do one more column. Um, so the top one, let's make it cactus, a symbol for a cactus. And below that, we'll make um, a symbol for a cat. So you can think about the just what are the essential elements of any of these things that would communicate to someone that that's what it is. So this one is cat. And on the bottom, we're going to combine the two. So we have cactus, cat. We'll put those two together um, and see what that what that's like. You can choose your favorite um, from each segment. Um, and in this fourth one, you can make up your own, so you can make up a f another word or a feeling or some kind of description of something. Um, same thing there, and then combine it on the bottom. Cool. Okay, so that's our warm-up. Now, we're going to start making stencils. Um, so you should have two more sheets of paper. We're going to work with one. Um, let's see. So take one piece of paper and fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Um, and then open it up. You should have four segments. Now you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut right along those lines. Remember to take a breath periodically and feel your body. It's just a good practice. Okay, 
So now we have four little pieces of paper. Let's put um, three of them aside. We're gonna work with one. Now we're gonna fold this one in half. So today we're thinking about abstraction and symbols. Um, so we're gonna make some stencils today um, using scissors and paper to represent some kind of an idea that is meaningful to us. Um, so today I am thinking a lot about, um, and lately I've been thinking a lot about how I can love myself more. Um, I think that often we we just tend to have these thoughts um, that, you know, we put ourselves down for making mistakes or not doing things right. And I just wanna be more mindful of giving love to myself like I do other people. Um, so that's what I'm thinking about today as I make my design. Um, so we're gonna do some simple cutting things. Um, we'll open it up and then We'll add some other elements. Um, so whatever you're thinking about for your design, um, it could maybe be loving yourself, it could be nature, maybe you're thinking about nature a lot lately, maybe you're thinking about someone um, or something. Um, just have that in your mind as you work and set that intention towards what you're working with and, um, and we'll create something meaningful uh, for ourselves, for each of us. So we have our folded piece of paper. We are going to, you'll notice that this side is folded edges and this side is open, okay? So right now we're gonna cut from the folded edges. So I'm gonna, we're gonna cut one straight line from one folded edge to the other. And it can be here, it can be down here. Um, you do wanna keep the edges from the open side. We wanna keep like a, a pinky width border. So here and here. So we don't wanna cut it all the way off because that's gonna, it's gonna break it up. Um, so cut from one folded edge to the other, just one straight line. Doesn't have to be even. So now we have two pieces here. We're gonna open this up. And you should have like a diamond shape, maybe a square. Um, so you can look at this and think about what this symbol means to you um, and what your intention is today. So now we're gonna add, we're gonna cut into this diamond shape out here. So we're gonna fold it back up and we're gonna cut into this line that we already cut into. Um, you can add rays, you can add triangles, add something to it. Or take away, take away something from it. <laughs> okay, I did that. So now I have this shape when we open it up. Um, in previous videos I've gone over symmetry. So folding it, folding the paper like this um, makes it symmetrical. It's same here and here and here. If you were to fold it, it's pretty much the same. And if you fold it this way, it's pretty much the same. So that's symmetrical. Cool. So that's, that's one shape. We have that. We also have this diamond shape. So we're gonna open that up now. So that was the inside of our diamond. So the first thing we're gonna do, fold it back up. And then from this open edge um, that we cut, um, we have the open edge and we have the folded edges, right? So on the open edge, you're gonna cut off just the edge. So you can cut it like this, you can cut it like that. Um, we're just gonna make it a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and just cut a straight line there. Um, and then on the folded corner, you're gonna cut a little bit more off. Um, so I find that when I, I put my paper um, deeper inside of the scissors, I have a lot more control over small shapes as opposed to cutting with the tip over here. So, um, and this is pretty small, so just be careful as you're cutting. You can make this a curved shape, um, 
but you want to keep keep a lot of it. You don't want to make it too tiny, okay? And then take out your fingers. Okay, and when we open this up, we have a little bit cut out from the center and a little diamond. So this now fits inside of there. This is our first stencil. We're gonna put that aside. We're gonna make one more together. Um, so get another little piece of paper, fold it in half, and then fold it in half again. Um, so when you're folding, you can line up the edges um, with both hands and then crease the fold with your finger. That way it's nice and sharp. And you can pick it up and do that and then fold it in half again. Okay, cool. So now we're gonna do a similar thing. Um, we're gonna cut from, um, we're gonna cut on the folded sides. We have our folded side here, and then we have the open end over here. It has four pieces. So we're gonna cut on the folded corner. Now we're gonna make, um, we're gonna cut from this edge to this edge, but we're gonna make it a curvy line. Um, so you can make it circular, you can make it a little wavy. Um, and again, we wanna leave a border, that's our pinky width, um, away from the edge, we wanna keep that. So whatever line you make, don't cut in that area, okay? So we'll cut from this edge somewhere to this edge. And again, I'm cutting deeper in my scissors so they have more control. Cut that out. Cool. So we're gonna open this and see what it looks like. That's pretty cool. We're gonna fold it back up. And now, It's up to you. So we can cut again into this edge if you want to. Um, we can also cut away from this outer edge. Um, so you can see that this is very square right now. Um, so we can cut again from the folded edges. Boom, boom. We're just gonna cut along the border though. Um, and you can do a straight line um, you can do zigzags or a curvy line of some kind. Um, and I'm not gonna make this too thin right here. So just cut off the border if you want to. Cool. Okay, so now we have a shape like this. Cool, I'm gonna put that aside. We're gonna pick up our little piece here. Um, when you're cutting, it's good to cut over your, your workspace just so that you keep all of these little pieces together. So let's fold our inner piece up again. And we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna cut along this edge, same thing, um, same shape, or you can change it. Um, but we're gonna cut off this border. Make it a little bit smaller along the open end. And then you can also cut a little bit from the center. If you want to, you don't have to. Cool, so I have this little shape. So now this is gonna fit inside of my bigger shape. Um, so those are the two stencils um, we made. You still have these two pieces of paper. You can rewind the video and make different versions of these, or you can experiment with folding these and cutting them and making your own stencil. Um, right now, we are going to pick up all of our scraps here, little tiny scraps. Sometimes they look cool, um, and you might be able to use them. You can save them if you want, but anything you don't want, let's throw away, and anything that's really tiny, throw away. So you should have a couple pieces of fabric. Um, 
I have, let's see, I'm going to work with this one first. This one is stripey and it's going to look really cool. Um, so you want to lay it out flat. Um, lay it on top of your newspaper and um, if it's folded um, or if it's a t-shirt, you want to put something inside of it because um, the bleach will go through the fabric. So lay it out flat. In front of you, that's all set up. Um, pick out your favorite stencil and you're going to place it onto your fabric. So I'm going to do that and this. Cool. Okay, and then we have our paintbrush nearby. We have our rag close by. We have our other stencils here. We can move the scissors aside and your pen, um, any extra materials you would want to just move aside. Um, so now we're going to mix our bleach. Um, you might, you probably want some help from your parents um, or somebody in your household. Um, so get a bowl and it's good if it lays flat. Um, Something like this um, is really easy to tip over. And this is because it has like a cupped bottom. So this is gonna be better. You can see that when I tap it, it doesn't tip over as easily. Um, so if you have anything, get something with a flat bottom. You can use a cup or a bowl. Um, just make sure that you don't drink from anything on your table. Because bleach is really toxic. So we're going to open up our bleach and um, one thing I like to do if it's a big bottle is just use the table as a support when I'm pouring it and you're going to pour a little bit of bleach into your cap and pour that into your bowl or your cup. We're going to do two caps. and see how that works. So two caps. Careful not to touch the bleach. Um, and you can use gloves at this point if you have gloves. Make sure your bleach is closed tight and put that aside. And then we have water. This is just tap water. And you want about a half a cup of water. So like most coffee cups are one cup. So if you fill that halfway with water, that should be about a half a cup. So I like to have the bleach pretty close, um, close to my fabric. That way I don't have too much um, space to travel with the bleach. Um, if you have any threads coming off of your paintbrush, go ahead and pull them off and throw them away, put them aside. And then we have a rag right here. Um, and today, so we have a, I have a paperweight on the supply list. Um, so this is where that's gonna come in handy. I'm just gonna place my weight, which is a jar today, on right on top of my paper. That way, as I'm painting, um, nothing moves. Okay, so you're gonna take your paintbrush that you made, um, and you're gonna dip it in your bleach, and you're gonna be really slow with this. Um, and as, as you pull it out, it's going to drip, so just hold it over the bleach until it stops dripping. And if it's dripping a lot, you can um, just press it on your rag a little bit. Um, cool. So I like to work right over. And we're not going to be painting like this. We're going to be pressing um, from the top down into the fabric. So you just want to press onto your stencil, your bleach. And most fabrics, you'll be able to tell um, if it's wet and you just want to make sure that you get it wet all over your stencil into the fabric and then I'll put down my paintbrush on my rag 
pick up my weight and move it to the side. And we'll get more bleach. And remember to just go slow. Um, if you are in a closed space, you probably want to open a window. Sometimes it's pretty strong. And then you're going to press the other side. Cool. Take off my paperweight. Um, I would like to print my stencil a couple more times. Um, and it depends on what your paper is like. If it's too thin, it might not. Um, you might have to remake it. But go ahead and move your stencil aside. And do the same thing. Again, we'll put down our stencil, we'll put down our paperweight. I'm going to move my bleach a little closer and load up my bleach, let it drip, and you want to press down. And when you're done, um, you want to put your fabric aside in a safe place so that it can change a little bit. Um, I'm going to set up one more piece of paper, fabric, <laughs> um, and this is a t-shirt. So I'm going to put newspaper inside where I'm working. get my other stencil. So on this piece of fabric I got bleach on it already somehow and that's okay I'm gonna work with it. Um, so I'm gonna put my stencil above that spot and there we go. Um, move your bleach a little bit closer to your fabric. Sometimes it takes a little bit um, a little bit of time for it to change color and if your your shirt is not changing color at all, oh, I forgot my weight, Um, it means that it's not going to change. So if it's not changing at all, it means that the fabric is some kind of fabric that doesn't interact with bleach and you need a different kind of fabric. Um, which is okay and you'll, you'll know pretty quick. Then we want to move our stencil again. Wait. Let it drip. Dab it. And press down into the fabric. Remove your weight. Okay. So when you're done, you're going to throw away your stencils.
So we're going to put our fabric aside. Um, it might take a little bit of time for it to change. So we're going to keep an eye on it and see how that goes. Um, your bleach water, you should pour down the kitchen sink or in your toilet and run water with it so that it's more diluted. Um, so dump that and either wash um, or throw away your container. Um, you can save your paintbrush. I would let it dry overnight um, or you can throw the fabric away. Um, and I like to fold up my newspaper. That way nothing falls out and we'll throw that away. Put away all of your other materials and and that's it. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, you should see a picture of this pretty soon. It takes a little bit of time. You can see that um, this is starting to change, but it's not quite done yet. Um, and when it's dry, you should rinse it and then wash it, and then you can make something new out of it or wear it and show it off. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today. See you soon. Cool. So today we printed with bleach on our fabric. You put new life into some old fabric you had, or you revamped some pillowcases or some fabric to make something else later. Um, first, we gathered all of our materials. We set up our workspace. We made our very own paintbrush, and we prepared our diluted bleach by putting water and a little bit of bleach in a bowl. We then laid out our fabric nice and smooth. We printed it um, using our stencil. Um, then we let the fabric sit. We cleaned everything up. We put our tools away. We threw our trash away. Um, we put all of our materials away. And then we had an awesome shirt. And so after that, you can let it dry overnight. You don't want to let it sit too long because bleach will actually eat away at your fabric if you leave it for too long and it's if it's too strong. Um, so you want to rinse it out and then wash and dry it like normal and you can use it in the future. Thanks for joining us today. Um, next time we're going to do some resist techniques. We're going to, I think we'll use bleach again and we'll tie fabric um, and then color it. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.